picture. It's a terrible picture. Oh. Hi, everybody. Do you see it? Yeah. It's all pixelated. Look great. Daddy, it's pixelated. Look great. Hi, everyone. Is anybody? <laughs> even here okay say hi okay oh david radke has just walked in the room and i will tell you after 30 years that man can still make me breathless when he kisses me and laugh like nobody's business but yo <laughs> i wish that y'all could see david radke Okay, just show them your back. Just don't, don't show them your front. Yo! Ah! Look! Stop it, David. I don't want anybody to see that. So he has got this, okay? A clay back wrap. It's ice. And it is attached to him, okay? Like some kind of very, very old thing. <laughs> so much weight i assure you that is not normally what his belly looks like he is pushing it out in between those bands oh my gosh david i'm dying right now no you won't i don't want that hi y'all i'm so glad that y'all are here i really am i'm sorry that i've gotten distracted laughing at my idiot husband but i'm so glad that y'all you guys are here welcome i've been doing these lives every day they're going well they're going well. Um, I mean, do y'all think they're going well? I mean, I, I do. Um, so I'm glad that you're here today. Let me know where you're watching from. We've got Bonnie McSparron from California. Nancy is here watching in Pennsylvania. Um, Carrie is here from Maryland. And, oh, Misty Matlock says you look amazing. Really? Well, thank you. I did shower today. Maybe that's why. Um, I'm glad that you guys are here. Listen, if you love me, you will share. Okay? Sharing is caring. And I could really use the shares. So it would be wonderful if you would share. That'd be so great. I appreciate it so much. I might have to take this off in a minute. That's my bra. Isn't it pretty? Look at that right there. It's pink. Um, anyway, I would love it if you would share this. It would, it would be so great. Because um, also, like... It's lunch hour for some people, and they don't know maybe that we're doing this live, and they could come on here and be with us, uh, but they don't even know about it. So thank you, Misty Matlock, from sharing, for sharing. Lauren Smith says, from New Jersey, you look beautiful. Thank you, Lauren. And see, I've known New Jersey to be harsh. One of my dearest friends is from New Jersey, and she would never tell me I look beautiful. She would say, Melissa. Why are you always wearing glasses that overtake your face? We can't even see your face with those glasses. So, thank you, Lauren Nichols. <laughs> um, okay, you guys. So, uh, it looks like we have 76 on here. That's a little different than the 388 that we had the other day. I'm telling you, it's because FB knows what we're going to talk about. It knows, and so it's going to shut me down. That's okay. I'm just going to keep on going. So that's why if you share, that would be great. So the last couple of days that we've been on here, we've been talking about decisions and how our life can start to feel very off kilter, like something's wrong, like there's um, this is not the life we signed up for, right? This is not the marriage I signed up for. This is not, oh, parenting. This is not the job I signed up for. Um, this is not uh, the weight, the body that I signed up for. Uh, our, when, we, when we think about our mind, like this is not the life I signed up for, that I have to constantly, constantly be in pain and in agony in my thoughts. Like what is going on? And so <clears throat> we end up with this life that just isn't working. And I asked you guys yesterday, 
to share in the comments about where you want to see your life get better. And I, I got comments from, I just, I just want to be a better woman. I just want to be an overall better person to, I really want to be a better parent for my children. I don't feel like I'm making the best choices for them right now. Um, we got, uh, what was the other one? Oh, we certainly got a couple that were like, you know, my marriage is really <clears throat> not going well. And that in itself, when such a huge, important relationship in your life is, is not, is not working. It, man, that just affects everything, doesn't it? But I was really overwhelmed at the number of people who said, wait. Now, I knew that was an issue for me, but I was really surprised at the number of people who said, my body, my body. Like, my body is a product of my choices. <clears throat> and my choices have not been good, Melissa. And now... I'm reaping the benefit. I'm reaping that. Well, not even the benefits of that, but I'm I'm reaping what I've sown here. In in correlation to my body, so. so what? There is a man on here. Who just put that he is John the wife kisser, and before any of you think that he is uh, some kind of lunatic. Let me assure you, he is. <laughs> okay, for anybody who reads that and thinks, there's some sicko on here. You would be right. John Wampler, log off. Sorry, y'all. He's actually a friend. <laughs> Get off, John Wampler. <laughs> um, but I want to ask today, for those of you who are on here today, uh, what... And a lot of you are on here who were on here yesterday, and so your answers will probably be the same. But what is the area of your life that you feel has most gotten you off kilter? It, it's the one area of your life, or I'm sure, I'm sure there are several. You list several if there are. But what is that area that's not working? It hasn't been working for a while. You don't really know why mainly because you haven't taken the time to figure out why because truthfully if you if you took the time you could figure it out um i like to say that a lot of uh of our decisions lead us into an area of our life that isn't working i think if you go back you can probably start looking at some decisions um that you started making that <clears throat> were not benefiting you the best <clears throat> so Diane is saying stress. Um, Shannon says balancing everyone's needs but my own. Um, Emily, hi Belinda Waters. Emily um, Marini says her body and her health. So she's essentially what Emily is saying is I've looked over my life and I can tell you in the area of my body and my health, this is not working for me anymore. Thank you for being honest. That's not often a very easy thing to admit okay that's not often easy thank you for admitting that <clears throat> i'm finding it difficult to forgive someone that betrayed me says nick fan um nick i know how that feels and i'm going to tell you right now if you don't take ownership of that if you don't do something about that um it's not just a couple of things in your life won't be won't work out. I'm telling you, your life will go off the rails. It will go off the rails. Okay. Um, we've got another health. <clears throat> we've got weight. I do good for two or three weeks and then I stop. I don't sustain good changes. Missy says, I wish that there was just one answer. Um, let's see. Health issues again. Health issues again. Everything. Tina says, e Melissa, I ain't got time to write them all down. <laughs> Everything in my life is is off, um, says Tina. Grief, stress over boyfriend taking 45000 and walking out. Um, I know that has to be a huge thing to overcome. Um, 
struggling with is it okay after forgiveness to put up a boundary and not let that person back in stress about kids <clears throat> so i told you yesterday to ask this question when it comes to decisions does this whatever it is so let's say you're, you're ha you have to make a decision about um shannon you have to make a decision about your kids okay does this take me or move me forward into the life that I want? So let me give you an example, because a lot of times people will tell you what you should do, but they won't tell you how to do it. Let me give you an example. Let's say Shannon says, I'm stressed about my kids. <clears throat> and let's say Shannon's kids are 16 and 21. And she's worried about some some choices they're making, some friend groups that they're around, some um, she's worried about the fact that uh, they keep going from job to job to job to job, that one of them's failing school and one of them's left college and one of them's in a bad relationship. I'm just I'm just making stuff up. I don't know, sweet Shannon. I don't even know what her story is. OK, I'm just telling you. <clears throat> and Shannon is constantly stressed over these kids. She's constantly worried about them to the point that she interferes in their life. And she knows she is, but it's like she can't take her hands off of it, right? She can't trust God to just do what what, what needs to be done in their life. She's got to be hands-on, and she knows it's not working. And so she's faced with this moment where she asks herself, does me doing this, does me constantly worrying, does me constantly keeping my hands on it in the issue, does me constantly like trying to control it, trying to control it, move me forward in my life? And the answer is obviously no. No. Any time that we would be, would go backwards, it, it's not moving us forward. It, and trying to control a situation that we can't control is a perfect example of that. So <clears throat> let's say, let's talk about something that, um, uh, let me see, who is somebody that wrote, okay, Emily, sweet Emily, okay? Emily wrote about her body and her health, okay? So let's say Emily is faced with some choices. Um, let's say Emily's, uh, her weight's kind of gotten out of control <clears throat> and showing up in some of her blood work, showing up in back pain. It's showing up in the way she sleeps and or doesn't sleep at night. It's, it's, uh, it's a mental fatigue when she tries to try on clothes and they don't fit. She's stressed about the summer because it's bathing suit season and she's supposed to go on vacation with her family or her friends. And so now there's this, right? <clears throat> and so she says, I've got some decisions that I have to make. Um, and right now my decision is that I cannot stand to think about my weight. I cannot stand to look in the mirror. I can't stand to try on another thing and it not fit. So I'm going to eat this bag of chips and that's going to make me feel better. My question for Emily would be this. Does eating that bag of chips, does that decision right there move you forward in your life? No. Well, no, Melissa, but I'm so depressed when I think about it that I literally can't get out of bed. Okay, so let's look at that decision. Does you staying in bed all day, anxious about your weight, upset about your weight, depressed about your health, move you forward in life? No. <clears throat> so do y'all see what I'm talking about? Our decisions matter. Because they will either move us forward in life or they will hold us back. And so what some of you are saying is like Missy, who a minute ago said, I'm off the rails in every area of my life. Her life isn't going forward. Her life isn't um, doing well. She isn't prospering. She's not prospering in maybe financially. She's not prospering in her health. She's not prospering in her relationships because her decisions are not propelling her forward. I don't think I can explain that any better than what I've just explained it. <clears throat> but now I want to move into something else. I want to move into another part of the discussion. I really want to do it with a throat lozenge in my mouth, but I can't seem to find one. 
I'm, I'm scrolling. I missed some of y'all's comments. So, <clears throat> here's what I want to talk to you about today. Raise your hand if you are tired, physically tired, and or mentally tired. Raise your hand if you are anxious. Raise your hand if you are overweight. Raise your hand if you are depressed. Raise your hand if you are struggling. Well, in what area? Any area. Struggling with unforgiveness. <clears throat> struggling with uh, finances. Struggling in your marriage. Struggling with your health. Any area. Everybody's raising their hand. I could not feel you more. I could not feel you more. I get it. I'm sorry you are feeling tired and <clears throat> unfocused and anxious and stressed and overweight and depressed. I'm, t I'm so sorry that you are, but I want to tell you something that I hope will encourage you today. Those are just feelings. They are not who you are. You feel depressed, but that actually is not who you are. You were not created to be depressed. You were created to have life and have it more abundantly, to have joy overflowing. These are all of the things that God has endowed you with. Depressed is just how you feel. It is not who you are. Stressed out is how you feel. It is not who you are because it is not who you were created to be. And some of you need to learn that there is a difference between how you feel and who you are. And I need some of you to get that today. There is a big difference between feeling overweight and that being who you are. You may say, no, Melissa, I've looked at the scale. I am overweight. I get that. I, are you kidding me? I know from, with, from what you speak. I also, I've lost 50 pounds and I got 60 more to go. I also am overweight. But that is not who I am. Do you understand that? That is something that I have brought on by my choices. That is not who I am. Who I am is capable. Who I am is hopeful. Who I am is faith-filled. Who I am is a conqueror. Who I am is victorious. Who I am is freaking smart. Who I am is joyful. I am, I deal with my weight. I battle with my weight. The scale says I am overweight. The scale doesn't lie. Nor does my doctor. But that is not the label I'm going to wear because that doesn't make me who I am. Does that make sense? Okay. Thank you. If you're enjoying this, I hope you will share. The truth of the matter is, and this is what I want to really narrow down and talk to you about today. The truth of the matter is, for everything I labeled, which was tired, stressed, anxious, depressed, um, overweight, there is something else that you can be. You can be hopeful. You can be healthy. You can be healed. You can be happier than you've ever been. You can be expectant. 
You can be those things, but you have to choose. And that, my friends, is where the rubber meets the road, in the choosing. Ooh, look where we are. Once again, we're back to decisions. Let me give you a definition. <clears throat> the definition is ownership. Ownership. Ownership is controlling what we can control and being fully accountable and fully responsible for the choices or the decisions that we make or don't make. Ownership is controlling what we can control and being fully accountable and fully responsible for the decisions we make and the actions we take or we don't take. And so often I get on here and I read comments and I don't want to sound harsh and I don't want to sound rude. Please, y'all, please, I don't. I am rooting for you. I love you. But so often I get on social media and, and I have women that raise their hands, women that raise their hands. But when I say, are you going to take ownership of your life? I instantly get an excuse. I instantly get an excuse. Melissa, I don't have the time. Melissa, my kids are going to be the death of me. You don't understand. Melissa, I've got arthritis. Melissa, I have chronic pain. Do you know how many people that I know that have chronic pain, but chronic pain does not define them? But Melissa, I'm like 200 pounds overweight. Do you know how many people I know that are 200 pounds overweight, but they are not letting it define them? When are you going to take responsibility and change what is off the rails? When? Christy says, you can be in control of your life instead of your life controlling you. That's a word, sister. Thank you, Christy McNeely. I don't know why I said Neely. I mean, McNeely. It's McLam Neely. Um, <clears throat> it's hard to find a new life, Bernadette says. After four years, I still don't know who I am. Okay, Bernadette, please forgive me for you're going to feel like I'm picking on you. It's been four years. Why haven't you done the hard work of finding out who you are? That is called taking ownership of your life, Bernadette. This is your one life. You only get one chance at it. Wouldn't it be great to go to your grave knowing who you are, what you stand for, who God made you to be, what your purpose is in this life? But you only get one shot at it. Jess says, I'm at a crossroads with trying to figure out what I want to do with myself in my career. Jess, I'm so glad that you're here today. I'm so glad that you say you needed this today. Let me challenge you to just make a decision. I know that you're at a crossroads. I'm at a crossroads every single day I get in my car and drive. But I still have to make a decision of where I'm going to go. And here's the great thing, Jess. If I am driving and I make a right turn when I should have made a left, I can turn around. And you can too. And I know that because I'm a woman who has been at a crossroads many, many times in her life. And I've made a wrong decision. But I turned that mother around. And you can too, Jess. But what you don't want to do is sit at that crossroads for so long wondering which way you should go and what you should do that you lose faith in who you are and you lose hope for your future. Don't let that happen. Take ownership. Take action. Um, I lost 95 pounds. This is Tina but now have put 50 pounds back on in four years. I stopped caring about myself four years ago when my best friend and the one that loved me the most died. And that was my godly loving mother. Tina, I'm gonna tell you something. It is so funny that you say this, not funny, but you know what I mean? Because I have been dealing so much, whether it's in my personal coaching with women, I coach women, 
I teach women on online courses. Losing a parent has been a epidemic lately. I have heard it from so many. And I think it has to do with the fact that when we get to a certain age and we've had our parents for so long, like losing them, it's one thing to lose a parent when you're like 16 or 21. But when you have gotten into your late 40s or 50s and you've begun to care for that parent even, and then you lose them, it takes like on a whole new meaning, doesn't it? So I have heard that from so many. So I'm gonna talk to you for a minute, Tina, in the way that I talk to my women, that I coach, okay? Tina, you had something that a lot of people never have. You had a best friend, you had a mother, you described her as someone who loved you the most. You have had something in your life that a lot of people have never even had. It's never even been an option for them. I would challenge you, Tina, to begin to be thankful for what you have had versus what you lost. I would challenge you to get a pen and a journal and to turn instead, you know, you know, we, we've heard a lot like you should have a gratitude journal. Let me tell you what you should do. You should have a prayer journal and every prayer should be a prayer of Thanksgiving. Not I'm thankful for my car. I'm thankful for my air conditioning. No, it should go like this. I am so thankful that you gave me 44 years of a woman who loved me better than I, a love I've ever known. Thank you, God, for the time I got to spend with her. Thank you that she's not suffering today. Thank you that she's in a better place. Thank you, God, for that time. Thank you, God, for that love. Thank you, God, for those moments. Thank you, God, for those memories. The decision to do that, Tina, will begin to change everything once again. You've gained 50 pounds in four years, probably because you've begun making decisions that are not working for you. Why don't you take ownership and make a decision that begins to work in your favor? I hope you did not feel like I was yelling at you because I'm certainly not. I am challenging you, however. Tina, you lost 95 pounds. Let me tell you what that tells me about you. You are determined. You are a fighter. You are scrappy. When you put, when Tina puts her mind to something, she can make, she gonna make it happen. Already I know this about you. But what has stalled you is a loss. That's what stalled you. That, you can't stay there forever. You're at a crossroads. Will I let the death of my mother keep me here forever, looking left and looking right and not knowing what to do and who I am and just eating my emotions and not moving forward? Does that really get you the life you want? No. So we stop and we take ownership of that. We control what we can control. We become fully accountable. We become responsible. And you have to become responsible for different choices and different attitudes. And it begins with prayers of gratitude for what you have had, what you have been so blessed to have. Um, I made a vision board. I put encouraging quotes, Bible verses, goals and rewards. I put 25 smiling stickers, each representing five pounds. Every time someone asked how much I'm trying to lose, I would say five pounds because I had a five pound goal because 125 pounds was just way too big for me. And I crossed out one smiley at a time until I reached my goal. I have lost 125 to 130 pounds. Take baby steps and you will get there, friend, says Joy Jarrett. Joy Jarrett is um, clearly, clearly a woman who takes ownership of her life. She is a woman who said, I'm going to get this done. I'm going to handle this. Listen to what she's saying. Take ownership. She decided somewhere along the line that she was going to control what she could control. That she was going to be fully accountable and fully responsible for the choices that she would make and the actions she would take or not take. 
That, my friends, is called being accountable. That, my friends, is called ownership. I'm proud of you, Joy. I am so proud of you. Carrie says, I'm praying about going back to school to finish my degree after 30 years. What are you praying about exactly, Carrie? Are you going to pray about whether you should propel your life, move your life forward or not? There's some things we don't have to pray about, Carrie. There's some things we don't have to pray about. And if getting a degree would move your life forward, you serve a God who says, I want you to move forward in all things. You don't have to pray about that. You may have to pray about the timing. You may have to pray for the finances, but you don't have to pray about whether you should do it. He wants us succeeding in all things. That's called ownership. Good for you. Um, Jess says, I'm in tears. Thank you. Everything you just said, I know, but don't have the belief I can do it. So thank you. I'm just going to do it. Michelle says, I feel like a 45-year-old orphan. It sounds dumb, but I feel lost. He was my best friend. First of all, it doesn't sound dumb. No, it doesn't. Don't say that. It doesn't sound dumb, not to any of us. But let me hear you. Let me tell you something. Remember a minute ago when I said, "Who feels stressed? Who feels depressed? Who feels overweight? Who is tired?" If I had said, "Who feels like an orphan?" you would have raised your hand. But that's just how you feel, my love. That's not who you are. That's just how you feel. But that's not who you are. Who you are is loved, cherished, worthy. Who you are is seen, heard, spoken for. You're a daughter of a king. You have a good, good father who cannot take his eye off of you because you are the apple of his eye. An orphan is how you feel. An orphan is not who you are. Let's see what else y'all are saying. Uh, Christine says, the bigger the grief, the greater the love experienced. What a gift, but it still hurts. Uh, Tina says, thank you. Carrie says she's praying to have the courage to step out because she's scared to fail. Carrie. Um, in scripture, God said, don't be, um, discouraged. Uh, he, he was talking to Joshua in the army and he was saying, I don't want you to be afraid. Um, but the, the problem with that is how can we help? how we feel. God, you're saying God to step out and to have faith and don't be discouraged and don't be anxious, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm lacking courage here. I'm, I'm afraid. And you're telling me not to be afraid. How, how can we possibly help how we feel, right? We're human. But here's the deal. God didn't say in scripture, don't feel discouraged to Joshua. God said, don't be discouraged. Be courageous. See, there must be a huge difference to God between what we feel and who we are. You're saying that you are lacking courage right now. You're saying that you're, 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 you're afraid. Well, afraid is how you feel. You're scared to fail. Scared is how you feel. But it is not who you are. And there's a very big difference. Um, so I'm going through and I'm looking at a lot of things. I, I want to make sure that you guys are getting this and that you're sharing it. So many of you are saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. But would you share this, please, please, so that somebody else can hear this message in case they need it today? Please, 
Um, I, I am looking, I don't know how many shares I've had so far, but oh, please, please share this. It would, it would help me so much. But I, I want to, I want to end with this. I'm, I'm looking right now at some people who are saying things like, uh, I, I'm literally just trying to find, I'm, um, let's see. I, I had knees or knees replaced and I mean, that's a, such a traumatic deal and that's so real. Um, but what I have found is this, you guys, what I have found is that I will ask the question, who is, uh, who is depressed? Who is overweight? Who is sad? Who, who, who is feeling like an orphan? Who is tired? Who is anxious? And, and will get, you know, who's lost their hope, but I get all those answers, right? But I don't get women who say it stops today. It stops today. It doesn't matter that I lost 95 and gained 50. It doesn't matter that my bank account is low. It doesn't matter that my health isn't good. It doesn't matter that I've got bad knees. I can make small decisions today that will change the course of my life. Today, I take ownership. I got to tell you, I'm, I'm real tired of hearing excuses. I work with women all day, every day. So I hear a lot of them, but they are excuses. When one of our friends on here can make herself a board and put it up in her room and just make a goal of five pounds, five pounds, five pounds, five pounds, and lose a total of 125 pounds, do you not think that during that time that she lost that weight, she was hit with financial issues, that she was hit with parenting stress, that she was hit with grief, that she was hit with loss, that she was hit with broken trust, that she was hit with depression, that she was hit with anxiety, that she was hit with plateauing and she would get discouraged. Do you not think she was hit with all of that? But she just kept going a little bit at a little bit at a little bit at a time. A little bit at a time, a choice here and a choice there. She took ownership of her life and she made it happen. Nothing stopped her. I am not saying that money isn't an issue. I'm not saying that your children's health isn't an issue. I'm not saying that your divorce isn't an issue. It is, but it isn't anything that can't be overcome. It just isn't. Every bit of them. Every bit of them can be overcome. If you make a choice today, if you make an ownership decision today, that every single thing you do is going to propel your life forward, not backward, and definitely not stalling out. And that's really what I want for you guys more than everything. And Vicki Collins, I can say this to her because she's actually my girlfriend and she says, but I'm going blind and I can't change that. But Vicki Collins, that don't mean you have to stop. Talk to me about the number of people who are going blind that are still making strides in their life. You're st I, I, I just read, I just finished reading a great book. It was a thriller and it got me at the end. I was like, I was shocked. That's kind of your life right now, isn't it? Your chapters are turning out a little differently than you thought they would. That doesn't mean it's not part of your story. That doesn't mean that your story won't end victoriously. That doesn't mean that you won't end the re end your life at, at, the, at the last breath you take, having had a wonderfully, beautifully successful life. Maybe your purpose will change. Maybe your chapters will change. But it doesn't have to be the end. So, I'm excited to tell you guys about something new that is coming, a course that I'm going to be teaching. I want you to be a part of it. It is about this very thing. And I'll give you more information on it tomorrow, but it is about this thing. If I have hit on a nerve, if something about what I've said today has just a little bit kind of pissed you off, then you're exactly who I'm looking for.
because you deserve a life that is free. You deserve a life that is unchained to your past, to your decisions, to your depression, to your loss, to your divorce, to your surgery, to your arthritis, to your this, this, that over and over. You deserve a life that is unchained by that, that is unfettered to that. You deserve a life that is free and that is moving forward. And I'm going to teach a course on this very thing. How do you know that you're right for the course? Because if some things that I've said today have kind of pushed you off, then you're perfect for it. Because that means there's something in you that wants to change, but really feels like you can't. And I'm telling you, I'm living proof that you can. Let me end with this story. When I lived in Nashville, I lived in a little house on Maple Circle. And my master bedroom that David and I slept in had a big, huge window that overlooked the front yard. And it overlooked across the street. And across the street lived a mom and dad with three little boys. And very often, almost every day, I would see the mom come outside and play in the yard with those three boys. They were all small. They, none of them were in school yet. Do you want to know how I saw her outside in the yard every day? Because I was laying in my bed. I was 100 pounds overweight. I was severely depressed. I was alone. I was isolated. And for me, life existed in that bed. My face was broken out. My hair was greasy. I had no contact with anybody else. And I would stay in bed for days at a time. And I would watch her out the window. And I would literally think to myself, I'm, I kid you not. There's another day she spent doing something she loves with people she loves. And here's another day I've wasted. There's another day she spent doing something she loves with people she loves. And here I am in bed. Here I am in bed another day I've wasted. And that did not go on for six weeks. That did not go on for six months. That went on for a couple of years. Every day was a wasted day. And I did not wake up one day and just decide today is the day. Today is the day that I put on a swimsuit and go swimming and swim some laps. Today is the day that I just cut my meal in half and only eat half and start to lose weight. Today is the day that I join a Bible study. No. Instead, I made a decision to make good decisions. But small, tiny decisions would change the course of my life. And that if I turned left when I should have turned right, I could always make a U-turn. But at least I was moving. Today, stop making excuses. Stop watching other pe people play in the front yard with their children. Get up and get moving. You can always make a U-turn if you need to. But at least make a small decision that today you will do something. I'll tell you more about the course tomorrow. And I hope that that will be a decision that you will make as well. That you will decide. I don't know what Melissa's got up her sleeve. And I don't know what she's going to teach us. But she's really hacking me off right now. So it's worth a listen. I hope that's the case. I love you. I am rooting for you. I believe in you. I don't think there's anybody in your life right now that believes in you as much as I do. Because I look like you. I sound like you. I dress like you. I hurt like you. I'm just like you. But I'm not going down without a fight and you shouldn't either. 
I want to teach you how you can li live free, free, free in your life. I love you guys. I love you so much. And I will see you, oh, tomorrow. Let's, tomorrow is what's tomorrow? Thursday? Yeah, I have coaching and then I'll, I'll be here. I love y'all. Bye.